I would now like to show you how we can divide the left ventricle into its 16 segments and we call it the 16 segment model. Now remember back to early in the workshop I said it was okay to call the septum the septum and the wall that was most posterior the posterior wall. But in fact there are a couple of different uh, names and ways in which we can label these walls that you really need to be aware of. So if we have a look here where the RV joins the LV is obviously the septum. Now let's draw the septum. If I put a dot in the middle of the LV, I can then divide off the septum. So this is the septal wall. Now the wall opposite the septum is always the lateral wall. And when you're performing an echocardiogram and you have the septum on one side in your image, the wall on the other side will always be the lateral wall, provided you're going through the center, if you like, of the, of the heart or the center of an orange, I say. So if you've got an on-axis image, the wall on the other side of the septum will always be the lateral wall. The wall out in front will, of course, be the anterior wall. And the wall opposite the anterior wall resting on the diaphragm is called the inferior wall. It just so happens that the coronary arteries don't follow this four segment approach. And so we really need to divide the septum and the lateral wall again. So let's divide the septum. Now we just divide the base and the mid of the septum because the apex is too small to divide and we'll divide the lateral wall as well. So let's have a look at the septum. Now this part of the septum closest to the anterior wall is going to be called the anteroseptal wall. Make sense? What about this part of the septum? Well it's closest to the inferior wall and so it will be called the infroseptal wall. Let's go across now to the lateral wall and this part of the lateral wall closest to the anterior wall will be called the anterolateral wall and this part of the lateral wall closest to the inferior will obviously get the name infrolateral wall. Now there's another name for the infrolateral wall and that's the posterior wall and so uh, different labs, uh, people who have trained in different institutions around the world will uh, choose to go between those words when uh, describing the function or the location of that wall. Before we can label our echo images and explain to ourselves which walls what, there are a couple of other things I need you to remember. Now firstly is the location of the aortic valve. So I'm just going to put the aortic valve here on the anteroseptal wall. So if you're looking at the aortic valve on your echo picture, you're in fact looking at obviously the septum, but which part of the septum it'll be the anteroseptal wall. And the last thing you need to remember is that there is this cross phenomenon going on. So anytime you take the ultrasound beam and you slice through the heart to get an on axis image, you'll be going through obviously two of the walls. Now anterior and inferior, well that's pretty simple and that will be our two chamber view. But when you go through an anteroseptal wall, you'll always go through the infro of the opposite wall. Can you see here that it's not really possible to go through an anteroseptum and an anterolateral? You're not going through the center of the orange and that's not an on-axis image. So anytime you go through the anteroseptal wall, you'll always be going through the infrolateral wall or the posterior wall on the other side of the image. If we're going through the infroseptal wall, well, of course, we know the opposite side to the septum will be lateral and we can't have two infros and so it'll be an infroseptum and an anterolateral wall. So step number one, look at where the septum is located. Step number two, find the aortic valve and then you've found the anteroseptum. And step number three, remember this big cross phenomenon where an antro will only go with an infro and an infro will only go with an antro. Let's now use this 16 segment model.
So can you appreciate that there are six segments at the base, one, two, three, four, five, six, six segments in the mid section, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four segments for the apex. Six plus six is 12, plus four is 16. So that's how we get the name 16 segment model. Let's now look at the echo images that we can obtain and really appreciate what the walls are that we see from each of these windows. So let's start from the parastinal long axis or the apical window, the apical long axis. So we know that's the same window. So if we slice through here, we go through a little bit of the right ventricle, we go through the aortic valve, and so therefore we're looking at part of the septum. The part of the septum with the aortic valve we know is the antroseptum. And then we'll, an antro goes with an infro, so we know the antroseptal wall will be opposite the infrolateral wall. Now this is, as I mentioned, the apical long axis, apical three chamber, or a parasternal long axis, um, if you hadn't already gauged that. So here's our apical long axis. So it means this wall here is the antroseptum, and this wall at the back is the infralateral, and we know the other word for that wall is obviously the posterior wall. So that is where that image comes from. Let's now have a look at probably the easiest one. Let's do the two chamber view. So the two chamber doesn't go through any of the, the right ventricle. We don't see any of the right ventricle in this window. And so we know we go through the anterior and the inferior wall segment. So here's our two chamber. Now, which wall is going to be the anterior wall? We'll just have a look down here. And this is your left atrial appendage. And we know the auricles or the appendages are at the front of the heart. And that means that that is the anterior wall. The opposite wall will be an inferior wall because of our mud map here. Let's now do the apical four chamber image. And an apical four chamber image goes through here. Remember, we, do, we go through the septum, but we don't go through the aortic valve. So this is the image that we will obtain for an apical four chamber. And so we will go through part of the septum, but not the part with the aortic valve. So it's not the antroseptal wall. It'll be the infroseptal wall. The wall opposite the septum is always a lateral, and infros go with antros. So this is then the antrolateral wall. So I hope you can see that using this map, thinking about where the RV is located, so you can determine if you've got the septum in view, find the aortic valve, remember the cross phenomenon that's going on, an antro with an infro, and then you can apply this knowledge to each of the apical and parasternal windows to decide the name of the wall.